this is going to be our last video talking <coughs> about uh, profit and the firm's production plans in general. And then starting in the next video, we'll introduce environmental considerations and see how that changes the picture. <coughs> Here we're going to draw graphs and I first want to show more explicitly than I did last time what the problem would be if we were to model costs as being uh, uh, <coughs> like the Walmart case where you have whereas the firm gets bigger and bigger average cost gets smaller so that's called economies of scale so why we won't use or assume economies of scale even though economies of scale are very very common in a modern economy much more common than diseconomies of scale which is what we actually are going to assume so <clears throat> if we did then we'll get the graph that I'm just about to draw. <clears throat> the total cost curve, TC is total cost. The total cost curve would look like this. In other words, of course when you, g Q is quantity, and this is dollars, of course, the bigger quantity you produce, the more it costs you to produce, but not per unit in this case. So this is the, the case that I last time called the quote-unquote Walmart case, where as your quantity goes up, yes, your costs go up, but rather slowly. And the more and more you, your quantity goes up, the slower and slower costs are rising. And we're going to combine this with um, TR is total revenue. and you know it's P times Q and we're going to assume that P is constant as I mentioned in the previous video that is going to help us with keeping the mathematics a lot simpler so graphing TR means graphing P times Q but if P is a constant like 7 then graphing TR would be graphing 7 times Q and I think all of you guys know what the graph of 7 times Q is. It's a straight line that goes to the origin. So, <clears throat> so total revenue would be a straight line that goes to the origin. We want to infer from this profit, because profit is what the firm cares about. Profit is total revenue minus total cost. So it's the gap between the total revenue curve, which looks like this, and the total cost curve, which looks like that. So we want to want to get the gap between those two curves. <coughs> Where the two curves cross, it's easy to see what profit's going to be. If the two curves cross, then total revenue is equal to total cost, and so total profit would be zero. To the left of that point, you see the total cost curve is here, and the total revenue curve is here. So total cost is above total revenue, which means profit is going to be negative. Well, not a Q equals zero. A Q equals zero, you're back to zero again because at Q equals zero, you're here, you don't have any revenues or any costs. But in between, for example here, costs are above revenues and so profit's going to be something negative. Let's say here. But once you get to a larger quantity like here, uh, let me label these quantities. Uh, I'll call this uh, Q1, I'll call this Q2. When you get to Q3, you can see that 
revenue is here and cost is here, so revenue is now above cost, and the gap between them is profit, which isn't very big, but it is positive. So we have something that's not very big, but it is positive. If we get to a higher value of Q, let's say Q4, then the gap between total revenue and total cost gets even bigger, and so we have a bigger profit. Extend this. So if we go to a larger Q, Q5, the gap here gets even larger. Here's total revenue, here's total cost, the gap is profit, and so profit gets even bigger. So the question is. Where does the firm want to go? The firm wants to pick the Q that maximizes profit. What Q will maximize profit? Well, if I draw an extended version of this graph, Q dollars, total cost is going to look like this, total revenue like this. You see that as if, if you increase Q more and more and more, profit just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And the reason is because we've assumed that the total revenue curve rises linearly, but the total cost curve doesn't rise linearly. It rises less than linear because we have economies of scale. We have this so-called uh, Walmart case. You can think, on average, revenue stays the same. It's just equal to price. But on average, cost keeps on falling. The bigger and bigger Q is, the smaller and smaller average cost is. The result is that what the firm wants to do is set Q equal to infinity. In economics, we often denote the optimal value of a variable with an asterisk. And we call it star, because asterisk is kind of harder to say than star. So Q star here is equal to infinity. That doesn't make any sense at all. The firm, it, uh, the firm can't produce an infinite amount of output. One reason is because consumers, consumers would never buy an infinite amount of output uh, of this firm's output. So this doesn't make any sense. This setup doesn't make any sense. The setup where we assume co uh, perfect competition and therefore price is constant, together with economies of scale, which means that total cost is rises less than linearly, means you're mixing the total revenue, the, the competitive idea that revenue rises linearly with the economies of scale idea that cost rises less than linearly and you get this absurd answer that, that Q star is equal to infinity. So that's the reason why we are not going to to make this assumption. The assumption we are going to make is, so what we will do, is we'll assume diseconomies of scale. That is, that the bigger the firm is, the more at a disadvantage it is in terms of costs. That as quantity increase, costs rise more rapidly than linearly. So we're going to assume that total cost curves look like this. This shape, uh, mathematicians would call convex. The only industries in the real world, in the, the 21st century, that look like this are industries where you see lots of small firms. Uh, well, let's see. What was those? Maybe um, uh, hairdressers, uh, barber shops. Those are usually not part of big chains, although there are some big chains actually. Um, 
restaurants obviously you have some big change like like burger chains but you also have lots of uh, companies operating only a single restaurant um, perhaps dry cleaners I mean there are certainly a few parts of the modern economy oh another one might be um, plumbers people who who uh, and electricians people who work on home repair Th there are some parts of the modern economy that are characterized by small firms and those probably fit with our story of this economies of scale where it really doesn't help to become a huge firm but I will admit, like I did last time, that most economies in the 21st century exhibit economies of scale, but we just can't talk about them. Um, I mean, we would have to, the way economists do talk about um, situations where you have economies of scale is um, they, uh, so, so you have to have this kind of, sorry, you have to have this kind of total cost curve, so you have to get rid of this kind of total revenue curve. You have to have some other kind of total revenue curve where price depends on the quantity that's sold, where the firm understands how price depends on the quantity that's sold. Like uh, a car company knows that if it raises the price a lot, its consumers are going to buy fewer cars, and then you have to model that behavior. And that gets us way out of the field of environmental economics. So that's the reason why we're not going to do that. Um, this video has gone a bit longer than I thought, so I'm going to stop here. The next video, we will see the implications of this, that is, diseconomies of scale for profit. So we're going to draw this graph again. I'll draw in a total revenue curve. I'll, in other words, I'll draw in a total revenue curve. I'll draw a graph like this for profit, so we'll see how profit looks like in that case.